Funk music has been one of the most requested genres from our students here at EDM Prod. Over the last few years, funk has exploded in popularity and it feels like nowadays it's literally on every TikTok and Instagram video. So in this video, we're gonna go over my favorite tips and tricks to create your first funk tracks. We're gonna look at the trademark sounds of a funk track, how to write a typical funk melody, laying down some drums, how to arrange a funk track, and a lot more. And by the way, make sure to grab every sample, loop, and MIDI pattern in the link down below. And with that, let's get into it. Okay, so this is my project here. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of uh, pre-work. Uh, that's because I've already written an article on how to make funk. So if you want to check out this guide in written format, there's also going to be a link for that down below. So first, uh, I'm going to start with the melody. That's probably the most recognizable aspect of funk. Uh, before I do that, let's set our tempo. So I've set it here to 130. Uh, funk has quite a lot of subgenres. So if you're making drift funk or house funk or wave funk, uh, the tempo can vary quite a lot. So for this project, I've set it to 130, but you can set it anywhere between 120 all the way to 170. Let's start with the melody first, and the core aspect of a funk melody is the cowbell. If you don't know what a cowbell is, this is what it sounds like. So that's, that's a cowbell. It already sounds pretty good uh, as is. So what I'm going to do first is write uh, a melody and then we're going to process it. A very common scale that people use uh, in funk is the Phrygian scale. If you've never heard of the Phrygian scale, the easiest way to get it is to start with the natural minor scale. So let's say we're in A minor. To get the Phrygian scale, you take the second note from that scale and you take it down a semitone. So in our case, B would be the second note in our scale, and I'm gonna bring that down half a step to B flat. So instead of this, you get Straight away you can hear how that flat second really gives it that funk vibe. I find that the notes that work really well in the Phrygian scale for funk are the first, the second, the fifth, and the sixth. Um, but you can experiment with all the notes and find a melody you like. This is the melody uh, that I settled on. A key aspect of a funk melody is that it's repetitive and simple. So as you can see here, the melody is quite simple, only two or three different notes, and it's quite repetitive as well. First, funk tracks are super compressed, and secondly, they have a ton of distortion, saturation, and just overall grittiness and dirtiness to them. In this case, I've used uh, OTT on this lead, and then I've used Camel Fat. We've done extensive guides on these two plugins and how to use them on our blog, so you can check that out uh, if you want. And then using Camel Fat here, you can see I only have the distortion unit turned on and the compression unit uh, turned on. That can sound a bit harsh and a bit too much, but don't worry, in the context of funk, this is exactly what we want. A second way you can create a funk lead is to design your own instead of sampling a cowbell. In this case, I'm using Vital. Uh, you can copy these presets if you want. Uh, let me show you how it sounds without processing first. So you can hear my computer has a tiny bit of issue processing vital and recording my screen, microphone and everything. But that gives you just an idea. A few tips and tricks if you want to design your own lead. I'm not going to spend too much time on it uh, now. You want to use this type of envelope to create that plucky sound. Next, you can experiment with different wavetables until you find uh, something you like. But generally what works well is two oscillators and the second one pitched down or up seven semitones. That's going to give your sound that natural harmony. Next, what's always good to thicken up a sound is to use the sampler. And here I've used a grinder noise. You can use a classic white noise or any other type of noise. But the goal here is really to add grittiness to your sound. And finally, it's always good to use a very short envelope like this to modulate the pitch of uh, your oscillators. And that's going to give the sound a natural attack. Uh, you don't want to set it too high or you're going to get laser sounds. So that's probably too much, unless it's something you want to do. But if you add just a tiny bit, 
it's going to give your sound a natural natural attack. So I've done this on both oscillators and I believe on the sample, uh, sample as well to give that a bit of attack. Next, let me show you each effect I added and how they affect the sound. So that just gives you an idea. The heavy lifting is really done by the multiband compressor here. So it's acting as an OTT. You can see the LFO here is controlling the drive. And so get, that gives it a bit more uh, character. So you can see that drive is increasing and then decreasing, just gives the sound a bit more variation. If you want, you can just use a sampled uh, cowbell or you can design your own lead or you can combine both. So this gives you an idea what it sounds like if you layer a sampled cowbell and your own lead. Okay, so now we have our lead, let's move on to some drums. So as I mentioned earlier, funk has a lot of different subgenres and depending on the subgenre you're trying to do, the drums will be completely different. Some funk tracks have four to the floor house style drums, other funk tracks will have drill or trap type drums. Uh, this is really up to you and what you prefer. I've gone for a more drill trap style uh, beat here. So let me show you what it sounds like and then I'll uh, go over what I did. You'll hear there's a ton of distortion on the kick especially. I've used a Decapitator, which is one of my favorite uh, distortion saturation plugins. So let me just solo the kick and snare first. So pretty simple basic stuff. For the main snare, I've got three layers here. A basic snare, a clap, and another clap, which I probably need to EQ individually. But again, this is just to give you an idea of how to build a funk track. And then I've got this other clap, which comes in and this just gives a bit of extra room and variation to the beat. Next, we have uh, some hats here. There's quite a lot of processing on the hats here. OTT, Decapitator again, and then STFU which is a, a free alternative to LFO tool, just allows you to shape the envelope uh, of a sound. I'll give you a listen with and without, just so you can hear how it affects uh, the hats. Gives the hats a bit more movement. Probably could be fleshed out a tiny bit more, but for now it's gonna do. A quick thing you can do at this stage is to add some volume automation or sidechain compression to your lead. The idea here is to duck your lead whenever your kick and your snare are playing. So here I've simply added a volume automation and carved out the volume whenever the kick and the snare is playing. With funk, because everything is going to be so compressed and saturated, it's really important to carve out frequencies, but also a volume, so that not everything is competing at the same time. Again here, depending on the style of funk that you're doing, you might want a classic re-space or a plucked re-space. In this case, because it's a more trap uh, style of beat, uh, we're going to go with the classic 808. So if this is the first time you're using 808s, here are a few tips to make it work within a funk track. So very often uh, an 808 is actually a kick and the bass sound all in one. That's the nature of an 808. In this case, as you've seen, I've done it separately. So first the kick and then the 808 is going to serve as the bass. But that means my 808 bass needs to hit on every kick. Next, you want to keep your melody really simple. So stick to the root note most of the time. As you can see here, when we're in A Phrygian, so I'm sticking mostly to the A note. Another trick you can do is to cut out your 808 on every snare or clap. So here you can see my 808 is playing and then stopping 
right when the clap uh, is playing here. Another trick you can use is glide notes, so making your 808 glide from one note to the other. So here, for example, you can see I'm playing the root note A4 and then gliding up to A5. To do this in FL Studio, you just click this little slide button here, add a note. So I'll just give you a listen here. Finally, I've added a bit of uh, volume automation here. Same idea as with the lead. We want to cut out the bass whenever the kick and the snare is playing. That's pretty good for now. Let's move on now to another key aspect of funk, and that's the lead vocal. Now a big influence of today's funk music comes from the Memphis rap scene of the 1990s. So if you really want to get that old school type of rap in your funk tracks, go for a Memphis style rap. So I've just searched YouTube for different styles of acapellas and found this one that I like. So can you hear there's a ton of background noise uh, going on here. Usually I wouldn't use an acapella like this because it's not clean enough. But in this case, because funk music is already so saturated and dirty in itself, it doesn't really matter. Let me show you what I did to process uh, the vocals here. We first have the original vocal, which I pitched and uh, stretched in time with the project. I've also added uh, a bit of processing to it, and this is what it sounds like. Then I've added a low octave, which sounds like this. Super dirty, super compressed, and then a high octave as well. So this is what all three of those sound together. So there's quite a bit of processing happening here. One trick you can use on these types of vocals is to mono them. Here I've used A1 Stereo Control, which is a free plugin. Just hit the mono button. This is because you want your vocal in the middle and often these samples have a ton of stereo information that you don't really need. Playing a bit here with the transients, mostly the sustain. So removing a lot of sustain to kind of clean up uh, the sound. Often what you'll hear in funk tracks is that the vocal is really in the background. You don't really hear it that well. You don't really understand what the rap uh, is about. It's mostly there as a, an ambience to your track. So here's what uh, this vocal sounds uh, in context. <laughs> As you can see, I've added the same type of automation to uh, the vocal here to make it duck on the kick and snares. A cool trick if you're using the same automation on different instruments to copy it quite easily is to simply double click on one automation, click here and go to Articulator and then click on Copy State. And now you can go to any other automation on another instrument, do the same thing, double click Articulator and now you can paste and it's gonna copy that shape into that new automation. Okay, so now it's time to add a bit more sounds to this loop to make it a bit more interesting and add a bit more variation. So here are a few sounds that I selected. And this is what these effects sound like in context. As you probably heard in this uh, eight bar loop, uh, I used a classic trick uh, of funk music. Super simple trick to make your track more interesting. And that's simply to pitch up or down your melody by one octave. So a super easy trick, but really, really effective. Oh, 
So the next section I've created here is what I call a switch. Now, not every funk track has a switch. I really like it because it just makes your tracks a lot more interesting. So what do I mean by a switch? It's basically switching completely the sound uh, of your track, kind of catching your listener off guard. So I'm just going to play it here for you and then I'll just walk you through what I did. So as you can hear, there's a complete change of atmosphere at this stage in the track. Now you don't want to completely change every element, otherwise it's just going to sound like a completely different track. So here I've kept our lead sound, but I've simply changed the melody. So this is what uh, it sounds like. So there's a bit of that similar rhythm in the melody, but the notes are completely different. And because the notes are a lot lower, uh, it stands out less in the overall arrangement. Uh, next, I've added some pads uh, down here. So super simple here, I just dragged in a few loops. Uh, I didn't spend too much time chopping them up or anything because this is just to show you how uh, a switch could work. So I've actually kept the beat and the bass identical and I've also kept a bit of the vocal at the end of each four bars. So that would be right here. So it's a cool way to just change a bit the atmosphere of your track. But obviously the goal is to come back to your main uh, ID afterwards. So here the transition would need a bit more work, uh, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do. Usually cutting out the bass and removing most of the drum elements is a really easy and fast way to create a transition. All right, finally, let's talk a bit about the arrangement of a funk track. Funk tracks are usually really short, two minutes, two minutes and 10 seconds, maybe two minutes and a half if you're really pushing it. So your arrangement needs to be really simple and straight to the point. So here we have our intro, our drop. So that's the main elements, uh, main melodic idea. Then the drop with the vocals, the switch, then back to the drop, drop with vocals. I would probably do the switch again here with maybe a small variation, another drop, and then an outro. Two minutes and five seconds, that's perfect for a funk track. So to recap here in the intro, I have the melody, uh, the drums, although not with all the hats, so a simplified version of the drums. Uh, and then I have the full uh, vocal with all the layers playing. And I'm cutting uh, everything off uh, with a silence here at the end to create a uh, a bit more excitement before the actual drop. Now one thing that's really missing here in the drop is some kind of uh, background pad or a synth or something that fills out the spectrum a bit more. Right now the only melodic element we have is that cowbell that we did at the start. So if I were to continue this track further, I would probably add some kind of uh, synth uh, really in the background just to fill up the spectrum a bit more. All right, I hope this was helpful to you guys. But that's it for me now. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.